بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah Alhamdulillah we continue going over some of that which is to be recited by the sick person from Ruqya the Ruqya or that which is read upon the one who is sick and as we advise before and we would like to stress that is for everyone to be diligent in making ruqya upon themselves and not waiting for someone else to, to read over you but for those who have the ability meaning those who know surah al-fatiha then recite surah al-fatiha upon yourself when you are in need of doing that. Recite the last three surah, the last three chapters of the Qur'an upon yourself if you find things are ailing you and the like. And there are other things that could be recited and inshallah ta'ala we want to go over some more of these things. So in addition to that which was aforementioned from those things in which an individual could recite upon themselves if they're feeling any type of sickness, any type of discomfort, uh, yani health-wise, so on and so forth, is that which has come in Sahih Muslim, has come in Sahih Muslim, عن أبي سعيد الخضري رضي الله تعالى عنه أن جبريل أتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا محمد أشتكيت that Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, O oh Muhammad, is something bothering you? Uh, and this is what is meant here. O oh Muhammad, is something bothering you? Do you have a complaint about something? Meaning health wise. Faqal sallallahu alayhi wasallam, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, Naam. He said, Yes. Yes, because he was having some discomfort, some physical discomfort. So Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Paul, he said, Bismillah, arqiq, min kulli shay'in yu'dhik, min sharri kulli nafsin aw aynin hasidin, Allah yashfik, Bismillah, this is a tremendous dua. This is a tremendous supplication that it behooves us to learn it, inshallah ta'ala. And we should be encouraged to learn it because this is a dua that Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he taught to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, a dua in which Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he made for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was sick, when he was sick. And it means, in the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, I'm making this ruqya upon you, in Allah's name. And this is something that bila shakku bila raib is tremendous, because the most important affair from all of the affairs is the affair of at-tawheed is the affair of a tawheed This is the reason that we were created, was to establish the ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create the jinn, nor the mankind, except for them to worship me. When we hear the likes of these ayat that mention ibadah, that mention ibadah, as we have here in this ayat, uh, to worship me. نعم. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ To worship me. The ulama from the salaf, from the sahaba, they mention that whenever you hear ibadah inside of the Qur'an, then verily it is a command to worship Allah alone, to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that worship, meaning that we have to implement the tawheed. Naam, we have to implement the tawheed and to worship Allah and Allah alone. So all of the commands for ibadah inside of the Qur'an are commanding us to worship Allah and Allah alone. This is why the ulama, the like of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he mentioned this ayah, he brought as a commentary, meaning, a liyuwahidun, na'am, to worship Allah alone, a liyuwahidun, to single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that worship, na'am. And this is what is meant. So, this tawheed, bila shaykh wa bila ra'id, is from the greatest things, or we should say, rather, it is the greatest thing by way in which an abd, a slave, will draw near unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from the greatest thing that the abd, the slave, he will make tawakkul unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by way of it. The ibadah for Allah and Allah ta'ala alone. So you find here the tawheed, because if a person is sick, then that which will bring, or that which is yani, a part of any remedy, then of course it is a tawheed. And Shirk, then shirk is the greatest of sicknesses, the greatest of sins, the greatest of calamities. So to make shirk in the likes of these situations is the epitome of what is counterproductive. So we find a clear contrast here, and this shows you a number of things. One of the things we can benefit from, from this expression, Bismillah ar-ruqiq, by the name of Allah, and make ruqya upon you, reciting upon you, is that what? Is it shows you the truthfulness of the deen of Islam. Because this is who? This is the angel Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the angel Jibreel is the, the best of the angels. Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, is the best of the angels. This is an angel that the, the, the Jews acknowledge, but they have enmity to the angel Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is an angel that the Christians, they acknowledge. And they claim to have love for Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam. But when we look here, we see that this right here is a big proof that the Christians are upon a way that is contrary to the way of Islam. They are upon a way that is contrary to what Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, is upon. They are upon a way that is contrary to what is correct. Why? It's because you find that these kuffar, these Christians, when they make, yani, uh, when they recite over their people, when they make their version of Ruqya, naam, they do it in the name of Isa. Or they do it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Trinity. But do we find this is the way of the angels? Do we find the way of the angels is to utilize prophets? Do we find that the way of the angels is to call to something that is called a trinity and things of this nature? No way. So we find here what? Bismillah ar In the name of Allah, I recite over you. In the name of Allah, we do ruqya upon you. Naam. This is tremendous. Ala kulli hal. He says, in the name of Allah, I make ruqya upon you. Meaning that you are cured from everything that harms you. Naam, min kulli shayin yubdhik. From everything that harms you, from everything that causes you aid and discomfort, then Allah heal you from these things and protect you from these things. Wa min sharri kulli nafsin aw aynin hasidin. And that Allah protect you from every evil soul and from every evil eye and from the evil of every envious individual from the evil of every envious individual Naam. 
And then the Tawheed is reinforced. Allah yashfiq. May Allah cure you. May Allah cure you. Because the cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you find this dua, it begins with Tawheed. Now, here at this portion of it, you find again a re-emphasis of it, Tawheed. Now, and then it's concluded, Bismillah Aruqiq. And by the name of Allah, I make Ruqiyah upon you. Now, this is tremendous because listen, whatever the, the, the issue, and this is the way of the Muwahid, this is the way of the one who's upon the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is that no matter what they are talking about, Right? No matter what the subject is, right? Tawheed is always appropriate to mention. Tawheed always appropriate to mention, right? Because how can you speak, for example, let's, let's, let's take Ali Sabili Mithal. How can you speak about history without mentioning Tawheed? If you truly understand the dynamics and the way the world works, how can you separate Tawheed from that conversation? Because when you speak about those nations that were successful and why they were successful, those nations that weren't successful and why they weren't successful, so on and so forth, and you do an analysis, an historical analysis on why these ones had prosperity, why they didn't have prosperity, so on and so forth, Tawheed has to come into it, has to come into the picture. Now, those nations who obeyed their prophets, who implemented the Tawheed, you find that they were successful. Those who didn't, you find they weren't successful. Those nations who they disobeyed their prophets, they were upon kufr, they were upon shirk. You may find they were successful for a certain period of time and for certain aspects, but ultimately their lifestyle was the root and cause of their destruction. Naam? And in that is what? Is, is, is a reminder that no matter what an individual may be able to attain from, the, from, the, from this dunya, no matter what knowledge and technology and level of society they're able to attain that's based purely upon the dunya and not upon the desires and so on and so forth, the desires is that which is self-destructive. It's self-destructive. In other words, it may prop you up from one from, from, from one aspect while it's tearing you down from another aspect. It is that which is not sustainable. So no matter what the society is, when they're given to kufr, they're going to be destroyed. So if you look at, for example, the ancient Romans, right, and the ancient Greeks, and so on and so forth, and all of the, 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 the great uh, things that people say about them and quote-unquote accomplishments that they were able to accomplish and so on and so forth to the end of it, all of those societies, both of those societies are what? Are gone are gone, right? What led to their destruction? What led to yani, uh, their demise and so on and so forth? Then of course, it was the kufr, it was the shirk, what led to their demise. It was their being contrary to the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that led to their demise. What destroyed their society, what destroyed their culture, so on and so forth? It was their kufr, it was the shirk that destroyed them. So how can we speak about history from a, an accurate way without mentioning a tawheed. How can you speak about history, right? If you look at it from another standpoint or to say it another way, how can you talk about history and neglect the prophets and the messengers? How can you talk about history and neglect the prophets and the messengers? You talk about king so-and-so, emperor such-and-such, so-and-so forth, but you don't mention prophets and messengers? How? No. So we understand and we acknowledge and realize because the, the reality is, is that the prophets and the messengers are the best of the human beings, then you have to include them when you talk about history because this is not a fictitious tale. This is not fiction. This is not something that was just made up, but this is historical facts. They existed. They lived. They were upon this earth. So when we speak about history, we have to talk about the best of the human beings who have ever walked upon the earth. Ma'am, and these are the prophets and the messengers. How can we speak about the prophets and the messengers without mentioning it at so he? It's impossible. Now the history is just an example, right? Just an example. But likewise, when it comes to medicine, when it comes to medicine, how can you talk about medicine? How can you talk about things which are beneficial for the body? How can we talk about things yani, that, that, that will aid a person's health and their overall well-being and so on and so forth and not, and not mention Tawheed? It's not possible. Because at the end of the affair, just like at the beginning of the affair, and just like in the middle of the affair, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who cures. So our connection has to be to Allah, not to the reason, not to the means or the cause, or not, excuse me, not cause, but not to the reason, yani. Because we have to take the means, the asbab, 
But the one who cures us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. And this is, this is well known. So our connection is to Allah, it's not to the asbab, it's not to the means. But our connection is to Allah. So even when speaking about medicine, how can we not mention this? How can we not mention this? Because if an individual, a surgeon for example, is taught the proper protocol on how to conduct open heart surgery, okay? The, the muwahid, the one who has iman, will always include in that discussion by the permission of Allah that if you do this and you do this and you follow this technique and you do this and so on and so forth from the surgical procedures on open heart surgery, at the end of the affair, you can do, quote unquote, proverbially, everything right. You can do everything right. You can do it according to the book as you were taught, so on and so forth. But that surgery still could result in that patient's death. He still dies on the table, right? And then it could be another surgery where perhaps protocols weren't performed to the best, yet the patient survives. So it's understood that what? The tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the manner that you do it, in, 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 that we have seen the best manner of doing it in this particular way, but it's by Allah's permission if that person survives or not, it's by Allah's permission if that person recovers or not, so on and so forth. Naam. So for the believer, for the Muslim, it becomes very easy. It becomes very easy. Naam. So if a person goes into a surgery, for example, and the surgeon, he is a Muslim, and the person, and he does everything right to the best of his ability, and the person still dies, Qadallah mashafa'an. Naam. This is not the outcome that anyone wanted. We feel sorry, sorry right now, and we, and we saddened over it. But, but this was never in in in, in, in our yeah, in control. This, all of these affairs of who lives and who dies, then this is from the command of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Now, likewise for the families, for the families now, if everything went right, and we're not talking about someone did something malicious or someone did something incom out of incompetence and so on and so forth where they're liable. No, we're talking about they did everything right. Now, so for the Muslim family, you won't find them chasing down the surgeon in the hospital, shaking him by his collar, saying, what happened? What you do? It wasn't in his hands to begin with. It was never in his hands. He did what he did from the means, but he was not granted tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so the patient died upon the table. Naam. Because this is, and this is the way it, as it relates to the means. It is incumbent and a stress that we keep referring back and connecting back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because, because as Muslims, our outlook on why we want to be healthy is different from the perspective and the outlook of the kuffar. The kuffar, they, those in the who strive to eat healthy and have healthy lifestyle and so on and so forth, right? It's because they don't want to die. They want to extend their life, <laughs> right? That's their, that's their perspective. Now as Muslims, this is not saying that we have a death complex and that we want to die, no, not at all. Because for the believer, it is better for us to live long lives, long lives filled with righteousness. Because the longer we live, the more righteousness we do, then the more opportunity we have to benefit ourselves. So for the believer, we want to live for a long time. Naam. But our, our look when it comes to uh, 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 health and well-being is not from the standpoint just because we don't want to die and we want to stay here for as long as possible. No, because we understand that what we're going to be here for as long as it's written we're going to be here. You can be the healthiest person and still drop dead from an aneurysm because it was de decreed you're going to die at 25. Ma'am, and you could be a person that maybe eat fast food all the time and then you live to 85. <laughs> right? So our perspective is different. So, uh, Yanni, when we look to our health is a holistic health. You may hear this term a lot, that the Kufari like to use a holistic. We're going to take a holistic approach to your treatment and so on and so forth. But what they're referring to are, Yanni, the, the, you know, maybe some social, some, 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 some social economical factors that may be, may have some bearing and effect upon you in addition to whatever medical issues that they're there and so on and so on. They add all these things together. But for the Muslim, no, we add more to that because it's not just about the health and the body. It's not just about my social circumstance and, you know, so on and so forth. But it's about what? We have a ruh about our soul as well. 
right? So if a person is concerned about the health of his heart, how can you be concerned about the health of your heart but you don't care about sins? When we know that sins sicken the heart, sins yani, can put a covering on the heart, destroy the heart, when we know that there's in the body a mutba, huh? that there's a mutba inside, inside the body, the salih has salih hajjah the kullu, that if it is uh, upright, then all of the body is upright, right? Uh, but if it is corrupted and all the body is corrupted, is it not except but the heart? Now nah, it's the heart. Right? Right. So how can we really be concerned about your heart and you're not concerned about the likes of these things? You're not concerned about Toba. Toba is big time for us because Toba cleans the heart. Toba cleans the heart. Now, nah, so Toba is big thing for us to make repentance unto Allah. It's the far, it's big for us to ask Allah to forgive us because it cleans the heart. So in addition to worrying about your cholesterol intake and good and bad fats and good and bad saturated fats, so on and so forth, now that has that has its its importance now. But also we're not going to look at that and neglect cleaning our heart from sin, cleaning our heart from yani uh, uh, lowly desires and, and and so on and so forth. All of this enters into health, heart health. Now, so when it comes to this approach. We're not just looking at the physical, mental, social, economical standpoint. Those things, alhamdulillah, we look at them. But also, more importantly, is the spiritual aspect, our ruh. Now, so any treatment that is worth its weight in salt is a treatment that is not devoid of, of these realities. That's not devoid of these realities. That everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even though we take the medicine from, from the medicine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down for us to take as relates to these particular illnesses, we are connected to Allah, not to the means. We are connected to Allah, not to the medicine. Ma'am, that makes sense? So in this dua, we see this being stressed. Ala kulli hal, thabata fi sahihain, it comes inside of the sahihain. That collection of a hadith that have been agreed upon by al-Bukhari al-Muslim and Aisha. On the authority of Aisha, رضي الله تعالى عنها, and the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يعوذ بعض أهله ويمسح بيده اليمنى ويقول that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he used to uh, make ruqya, he used to perform ruqya on members of his family. He's perform ruqya on members of his family by. Uh, Yani seeking refuge in Allah from ailments and the sickness and so on and so forth. Naam. And he would wipe them, touch them with his right hand. He would touch them with his right hand. Now remember, we mentioned that there are certain ad'iya that a person is saying, when they make an ruqya, a certain ruqya a person may recite on someone where they don't touch the person. There are other ones where they touch the person. Some things they recite a certain number of times, right? Uh, some things, yeah, there's a spittling when, yani, 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 the spit, uh, the, the spittle when they're, yani, then they wipe over the person, so on and so forth. All of these are different ways, different means, okay? So here, this is another, uh, another, uh, medical treatment, we should say, by way of Rukia, that we can add to our arsenal to fight against sickness and disease. And that is the Prophet Sallallahu he would recite this particular dua and he would touch the one who was sick with his right hand, with his right hand. And he will say, Allahumma Rabban Nas. He was saying, O oh Allah, the Lord of mankind. O oh Allah, the Lord of mankind. This is how it began. What is what is this dua begin with? It begins with what? Tawheed. Subhanallah. You see that? Ah. And Jibreel alayhi salam, salam in, 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 in his dua in which he talked to the Prophet alayhi salam, what did it begin with? Tawheed. Naam. <laughs> you see, because Islam is the truth. Islam is the truth. Naam, the Prophet Sallallahu he is upon the true religion. Like all of the Prophets and the Messengers. Isa, he's upon the true religion. Musa is upon the true religion. Harun is upon the true religion. Huh? So on and so forth from all of the Prophets and the Messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam. The reality is just that those who claim to follow them, the Jews and the Christians in them, they're not on the true religion. 
<laughs> they're not. And this is another indication which shows that this, they're not, they're not upon Tawheed. Ala kulli hal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began, he said, Allahumma rabban nas. Naam. This naam is Tawheed. What kind of Tawheed? Rububiyya. What are from the affairs of a Tawheed and Rububiyya? Is that what? That Allah is the creator. He's the sustainer. Right? He, he causes life. He, and he is, and he causes death. Giver of life, causer of death. But also that Allah SWT is what? He is the arranger of the affairs. So a person is sick now. A person is sick. Who decrees who gets sick today and who gets healthy today? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who decrees who's going to be in good health and who's not going to be in good health? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you're calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're seeking refuge in Him from sickness or you're asking Him to remove the sickness, what is the most appropriate thing to address Him with except for a tawheed al rububi Because it's connected to a tawheed al rububi Naam. Allahumma rabban nas. O Allah, the Lord of mankind. Naam. Adhib al bas Remove the difficulty. <coughs> Remove the difficulty. Washfihi and tashafi. And cure. Because verily you are the curer. Cure him. Or it can be her. Cure them. Because what? The, you are the curer. You are the curer. And then. So we find here again, it begins with Tawheed, right? Here, right here, at this portion, in the middle, we enter Shafi. It is a reminder of a Tawheed. Tawheed again, reminding the people that when you're sick, you need the Tawheed. And this is important, why? Because people who suffer from sicknesses, especially people who suffer from long-term sicknesses, a lot of the uh, medical professionals here in this country it is from their protocol to advise these people to seek counseling and to speak to counselors, right? People who have chronic sicknesses, they deal with chronic pain over long periods of time, whether it be the likes of fibromyalgia or these chronic conditions that cause pain over you know, years and decades and so on and so forth, right? They advise them to speak to a psychiatrist, to speak to a counselor, to speak to a social worker, whatever the case, whatever you call them people, right? To talk to them. Why? Because a lot of people, they suffer mentally when they're going through these things, they're constantly in pain and so on and so forth. A lot of people suffer. But these are the people that suffer are the people that what? Are the kuffar, mostly. And some Muslims with bad, yani, with weak faith, they also, they suffer. But from that which will alle alleviate and eliminate this type of suffering is what is a person's connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person is connected unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, 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 that reinforces the believer to deal with the ups and downs of life because he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 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 is putting him through this situation. One is a test for him. Naam. Allah Ta'ala is putting him through the situation and he's testing him as Allah Ta'ala promised that he's going to test them. Allah Ta'ala tells in the Quran that he's going to test us. And verily, most definitely, undoubtedly, we're going to test you. Allah promises you, he's going to test you. Naam. So when we get tested, Alhamdulillah, Allah told us he's going to test us. Allah speaks the truth. Naam. So we test it. But for the believer, as Allah Ta'ala, he mentions is that the believer is patient. Naam. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give glad tidings to the patients. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبًا قَالُوا Those who when a, when, a, when, a, when a calamity strikes them, they say, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Verily we belong unto Allah and unto Allah is our return. Naam. Imam Ibn Qayyim, he mentions that by, by saying, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ then an individual, he acknowledges that he belongs to Allah, that you are Allah's property. And by acknowledging that, he realizes that Allah can do to his property whatever he wants to do. Allah will not be questioned. We will be questioned. Allah does whatever he wants. We are Allah's property. So if Allah chooses to test us with this particular test and not the other test, Allah does what he wants to do. He's not questioned. We belong to Allah. Allah tests us with whatever he wants to test us with. So we acknowledge that. Now, so for the person who, so for example, is suffering from that chronic pain for years upon years upon years, 
they're able to have a better sense of mental stability because they realize that this is all a test from Allah. Allah to Allah has been test me with what he want to test me with. So you won't find him saying, why me? Why this? No, this is not the way of the believer. None lose hope in the mercy of Allah except the kuffar. So it helps the believer have mental stability and mental health. His iman. His iman, his mental health, so it helps him to deal with it. So they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. By acknowledging, wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, that we're going back to Allah, then they acknowledge that Allah is going to hold me accountable for what I did in this dunya, which includes how I dealt with this sickness. Was I patient? Was I not patient? Yeah? So he knows Allah is going to, if I'm not patient, and, 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 and I act out, and, I, and, and, and my tongue is not patient, my limbs are not patient, I do the haram, my tongue is not patient, I say that which is pleasing unto Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, so on and so forth, Allah is going to hold me accountable for it. But on the flip side, if I am patient, Allah is going to reward me for it. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, Idham al-Balama, Idham al jaza He said that the greater the, or Idham al jaza Afwan al-Aqsana, Idham al jaza Idham al bala meaning, the greater the calamity, the greater the reward. The greater the calamity, the greater the reward. Naam. So a person, a Muslim, he, he, he understands, he, he understands it. So a person that has chronic pain, every day is in pain, then they realize, in reality, this is good for me. Because my reward will be greater. My reward will be greater. The Prophet ﷺ informed us that, when a person is, when a believer, he suffers from anything, from, from worry, from pain, from even the prick of a thorn, sins come off. So now the person's in pain every day, every day sins is coming off, just because of that pain. You, you understand what I'm saying? The sins are coming off just because of the pain that the person is in. So now they reflect and realize, this is actually might work out better for me in my favor. Right? Now, you live decades like that, subhanAllah, how much, how much, yeah, the, the less sins you have upon you than a person who was healthy all them years and didn't utilize his health correctly and maybe destroyed himself by way of his health. So for the believer, he never reaches that portion where the physical sickness translates over into a mental sickness. So he, so, so, so his mental health is good. Now, but all of these things are important. But the, yeah, the long story short, what helps in making that connection is the proper iman. Now, the proper iman is founded, the middle of it, the end of it is what? Tawheed. It's Tawheed. Can a person have proper iman, strong iman to understand the likelihood of stuff, and they don't have Tawheed? No, it's not possible. It's not possible. Right? Person gets mad, he throws his pills, yeah, he throws the headache pills against the wall, I still got a headache. Who are you connected to the pill? <laughs> okay, you took the means, but... We don't rely on the pill. We rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many people take a take yeah, they take a pill for, for a headache and they still get a, they still got a headache? Right? Then they did three days later you may have a headache, same headache, same type of headache. You take the same pill and Allah cure you, you don't have a headache no more. That's the indication that they, they, that's a reminder to you that what? It's not about the pill, it's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nah? So if it so if it don't work this time, okay, how many no problem? We connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it worked now, alhamdulillah, we praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're not going to go and make, and write, and make a good review on how good this particular product is. Cause, 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 cause. No, Allah cured me, alhamdulillah. Now, this is what we, we see for the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. What do he tell his people? If I get sick, when I get sick, Allah cures me. <laughs> you see that? When I get sick, Allah cures me. This is from the adab of dua, this is from the adab of how we speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we don't uh, relate and associate bad things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Ibrahim said that yani, yani, when I get sick, muridtu, when I get sick. Now the Ibrahim, was he the one that decreed for himself to be sick and make himself sick? No, he was not. But not. But 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 in getting sickness, yani, you know, he, so he referred that to himself. He said, Allah cure me. Allah is the one who cures me. Now, showing the edit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, showing the tawheed. So in these affairs, these affairs of health and so on and so forth, yeah, then our connection ultimately is it has to be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why you keep finding this stress over and over and over, because it doesn't just help you with the physical ailment, but it also help you with whatever potential mental ailment could arise from dealing with the physical ailment. That makes sense? 
So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes on, he says, La shifa illa shifa'uk. Allah, again you see the, the Tawheed. He said there is no, there is no cure except your cure. There's no cure except your cure. Naam, shifa and la yugadiru saqama. A cure that leaves behind no trace of sickness. Naam. This hadith is tremendous. Naam, it's tremendous. وفي الرواية عنها قالت and inside of another narration on our mother Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها she said كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا اشتكى منا إنسان because in this one this was when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he would يعني make this dua on some of his family members نعم some of his family members so a person may understand it to be restricted to this is a dua a person make for his family only. No. So it comes another narration so as to explain that if any if any person complained of some type of medical ailment, some type of sickness, now I'm discomfort, so on physical discomfort, so on and so forth, that the Prophet Messahahu Biyamini, then he would uh wipe the person with his Right hand, see again, right hand, like the other. Thumma qal, and then he will say, wa dhakarat al dua, and then she mentioned the same exact dua. So the Prophet he would he would he would do this, and he would recite over people, make a nuqiyah upon them for sicknesses, his family members, and just any of the people in general. So this is that which can be utilized for the family and for all of the all of the people. Now, but in riwayat and qalat and inside of another narration, she said, "In the Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يرقي بهذه الرقية with a karzu." And she mentioned that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he used to, يعني سبلكين over people with this رقية. And then she mentioned this uh, this uh, hadith. But in Sahih al-Bukhari, in the side of Sahih al-Bukhari, and Abd al-Aziz bin Suhayl, قال he said, دخلت أنا وثابت على أنس بن مالك فقال ثابت يا أبا حمزة اشتكيت فقال أنس ألا أرقيك برقية رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال بلى قال اللهم رب الناس مذهب البأس أشفي أنت الشافي لا شف لا شافي إلا أنت شفاء لا يغادر سقما. That so he he mentioned he said that I the خلتو أنا he said that I and Thabit we entered upon Anas ibn Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه and Thabit mentioned to Anas he said oh Abu Hamza. He said, "Yani ashtakayt." He said, "Yani I'm, I'm having some some physical some health issues. I'm having some health issues. Some things are bothering me health wise, right?" Here, Subhanallah, there's a lot of takeaways. But let's just just one is that this shows you the closeness of the Salaf. It shows you how close they were and how they had good relationships with one another. The comfortability that they have with one another, that a person can enter upon his brother and he doesn't feel shy, doesn't feel ashamed to say unto him, I'm not feeling well. Now, because he knows his brother is not going to berate him, he knows his brother is not going to blow him off and show him no consideration, he knows his brother is not one who does not have concern for him. Because if you think someone don't care about you, don't have concern for you, so on and so forth, then you don't feel comfortable to even tell them, I don't feel well. Right? But when you know that there's love between you like that, when you know that there's compassion between you like that, then you feel comfortable to share what you're going through in your life with uh, with your brothers, huh? whether it's good or bad. You feel comfortable because you know that they intend for you good. You know that they intend for you good and they want for you good. We see this love and affection here. We told him, he said, I'm not, I'm, I'm not feeling well. So Anna said, would you like that I make ruqya upon you? The, the same ruqya of the Prophet وسلم, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa So he said, of course, of course. So then he made this dua. <coughs> he said, Allahumma rabbin nas, O oh Allah, the Lord of mankind, the one who removes the difficulty. You are, yani, uh, uh, you are the one who cures, and there is no one who cures except for you. 
You cure with a cure that leaves behind no sickness. You cure with a cure that leaves behind no sickness. This hadith is tremendous. The Shaykh he mentions, the Shaykh Abdul Razak he mentions, he says, وَقَوْلُهُ أَلَّهُمَّ رَبِّ النَّاسِ He says, and his statement, O oh Allah, the Lord of mankind, فِيهِ تَوَسُّلْ It's tawassul. Naam. You want to, yeah, tawassul. Tawassul is only upon tawheed. There's no tawassul that, 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 that involves shirkiyat. So the tawassul of the Sufi is not tawassul. At least not to Allah. Maybe tawassul to their shayateen. But not to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the tawassul unto Allah is upon tawheed. So they're making tawassul unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. By what? By rububiyyatihi linnas ajma'een. Because Allah is the Lord of all of mankind. Allah is the Lord of all of mankind. Now, the khalqihim. Allah Ta'ala created them with tadbir shu'unihim and Allah Ta'ala he arranges their affairs. Wa Allah Ta'ala yani and wa tasrif fi wa 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 tasrif umurihim and Allah Ta'ala he he uh nah I'm saying like arranges their affairs, right? He controls their, their affairs. Wa bi yadihi subhanahu wa ta'ala al haya wal mawt and it is in his hand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala life and death. Naam wa sihha wa saqam and health and sickness is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, ghina, well, faqr, and richness and poverty is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, quwa, well, da'af, and, uh, yani, uh, and uh, strength and weakness is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no matter what is going on in our life, we have to be connected unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want your situation to change? You have to be connected unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no, yani la hawla. There is no change from situation to from, from situation to situation. There is no change from situation to situation. You inside of a, you inside of an issue, right? You sick. You want just sitting, you want, you want, you want to become healthy. Becoming healthy is a change in your situation. That change will not happen except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can cause that change except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have a job. You want to have a job. You not having a job and then getting a job is a change in your situation. No one can change your situation except for what? Allah. Except for who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you should be connected to who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You take the means, of course. But then you connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to get married. You're not married, you want to get married. Or you married and you want to get married again. Or you married and married, you want to get married again. So you married and married and married, you want to get married again. And it, okay, that's it. Man, can only have four. Huh? <laughs> so you want to go from one wife to two wife, two wife, three wife, three wife, four wife? You not that that change can't happen except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, you constantly connect it unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything you do in your life. You're hungry, you want, you, want, you want to eat some food, you have to be connected unto Allah subhanu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't agree for you to eat no more, then not even a single grain of rice would you be able to put inside your mouth or to put it in, in your body. Not, not even a single grain. There's no more risk for you, that's it. You can't get no more. It's, it's over. It's done. Time for you to go. Right? So for everything we have to connect them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, we find here this. We find this here again. Naam. وَقَوْلُهُ أَذْهَبِ الْبَأْسِ And that you remove the bets. Bets here, يعني بمعنى التعب والشدة والمرو. It includes, it includes weakness. It includes يعني, severity of a condition. And also it includes sickness. All of those are included. Timothy. Okay. وَجَاءَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ الْأَنَسِ And it comes in the Hadith Al-Anas أَلَهُمَّ رَبِّ النَّاسِ مُذْهِبِ الْبَأْسِ وَفِي هَذَا التَّبَصُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِأَنَّهُ وَحْدَ مُذْهِبِ الْبَأْسِ مُذْ مُذْهِبِ الْبَأْسِ And in this is also to wassal unto Allah that He is the only one who removes harm. Allah Ta'ala is the only one that will remove the tiredness, the fatigue, the sickness, the disease. Allah is the only one that could remove it. The only one who removes it. وَلَا ذِهَابْ لِلْبَأْسِ عِنْدَ الْعَبْدِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَمَشِيئَتِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى And that the, 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 the tiredness, the sickness, the disease, whatever it ails that particular individual, it will not leave that person except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except by the permission 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no matter what happens in our life, no matter what state that we in, we always have to connect unto Allah because Allah can, wa ma lam yasha lam yakun. Whatever Allah wills is, and whatever He does not will, will never be. Is not. Naam? Like, wa qawlu, and his statement, ashfi anta shafi, and if he su'ali la shifa, and cure them because you are the cure, the in this there is, 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 is asking and beseeching Allah to grant uh, 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 a cure. Wa huwa al afiya, wa salama min al maru, and it is safety and it is. Uh, yani from sickness, to a cure from sickness and safety from sickness. وَقَوْلُ أَنْتَ شَافِي And his statement that verily you are the curer. Uh, atawa, yani tawassulun. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. الشَّافِي الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ shifa. It is making tawassul unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who cures and who the cure is only inside of his hand. كَمَا فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى like in Allah Ta'ala statement, إِذَا مُرِدْتُ إِذَا مُرِدْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ إِذَا مُرِدْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ Then when I become sick, He is the one who cures me. This was a statement of who? Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. Naam. And He said, when I become sick, then Allah, Allah is the one who cures me. Naam. وَقَوْلُهُ لَا شِفَاء إِلَّا شِفَاءُكْ And there is no Cure except for your cure. فيه تأكيد لما سبب. The inside of this, there is a, a, a emphasis and a reinforcement of what was aforementioned. What إقرار and a reiteration of what was aforementioned. بأن ال بأن العلاج والتداوي إن لم يوافق إذن من الله سبحانه وتعالى بالعافية والشفاء فإنه لا ينفع. وَلَا يُجْدِي نعم. Because يعني, And it's a very important point Because the treatment The treatment Even though the treatment could be correct The treatment could be exactly accurate And so on and so forth If that treatment Does not get this, يعني, The success from Allah Does not coincide with what Allah wills From يعني, uh, that, يعني, from, from cure and so on and so forth and, and, and cure Then that sickness It will not Help that person, it will not benefit that person whatsoever. So the sickness can be 100%, I mean, excuse me, the treatment can be 100% right, they perform their rights, so on and so forth. But if Allah has not willed that that treatment uh, take effect, it will never take effect. Naam? Because it can only take effect by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَوْلُوا شِفَاءً لَا يُغَادِرُوا سَقَمًا A cure that leaves behind no trace of illness. يعني هذا Meaning, لا يترك المرضا ولا يخلف علة. Do not. You're asking Allah not to leave behind any sickness and do not have any other sickness spawn from that sickness and result as and come about as a result from that sickness. والفائدة من هذا أن الشفاء من المرض قد يحصل because and the takeaway from this is that a person is, is that the cure. From a particular sickness, it could come. Then, meaning a person is cured from that particular ailment. ولكن قد يخلفه مرض آخر. But another sickness will come about after that. يتولد منه وينشأ بسببه. That another sickness will emanate from the first sickness. Now, in other words, a person has this particular sickness. Maybe, yeah, maybe we know how the you know, the systems are interconnected, right? So he has a, he has a, he has a, he has a sickness in one part of his body. But then, because he had a sickness in that, in that one part of his body, that goes away, but then it caused problems in another part of his body. Ma'am? So, this dua is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the sickness and remove any traces of the sickness and, 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 and prevent that sickness from leading to another sickness. This is, yani, subhanAllah, tremendous, right? Uh, and the like. ف... فسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يكون شفاؤه من المرض شفاء تاما لا يقطع معه أثر 
He says, so he asked that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes his cure from this particular disease, particular sickness, a sickness that is complete, uh, uh, I mean, excuse me, a cure that is complete, a cure that is complete and leaves behind no traces of the sickness and does not lead to another sickness and does not cause another problem. But it is a complete, a complete cure, a complete cure in every aspect. Wahada, and this is from the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu because he said, should I make ruqya over you, the ruqya of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Naam. And it shows us the importance and the high status of the ad'iyah that come that were taught to us by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because their benefit is tremendous, their benefit is outstanding. So I encourage myself and all of us to really pay very any uh, very much concerned to learning the ad'iyah uh, for, for 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 every situation, for learning the ad'iyah for every situation. Because if a person were to go and learn and 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 and, and give some time of their life to those ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu which he taught us how to then different supplications for different occasions in different situations, then he will realize subhanAllah that is yani, every moment of his life could become like ibadah. Because every time situation is a, is a dua. Huh? Leave the house, dua. Right? Going to the masjid, dua. Embarking upon his riding vehicle, and that, dua. So on and so forth. Ma'am, every situation, alhamdulillah. Coming, uh, entering to the masjid, dua. Leaving the masjid, dua. So on and so forth. Ma'am, there's always the yani, of God. But yani, a person could really capitalize and, and constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this, it helps the abd. Because of the ulama, they say it's, it, it, it changes up. It's not just one thing. Uh, for lack of a better term, it breaks the monotony. Not that there is monotony, but yani, for lack of a better term. That, so he goes from saying this dua for this, for this situation to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by, by doing this particular action. Another situation comes up, so he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that situation. So on and so forth. So it's, it's always new. It keeps it, you know, it, it keeps it new when a person can come and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in each of these occasions with that type of vigor, with that type of enthusiasm, so on and so forth. But that's hard, if not impossible, to accomplish if we don't know these uh, adhkar. If we don't know these du'as, then that's, you know, right? And these things like this are that which is very important to people. And I encourage myself and I encourage others to really spend time doing this. And to limit your time in that which really doesn't benefit you. Because how much things in our day that we give importance to, we give credence to, we give much concern to, but at the end of the affair really don't really benefit us. Now, especially in the social media age, how many you know, things looking here, looking there, you know, reading this, tweeting that, Facebooking that, whatever, liking this, and whatever the case is, right? And at the end of the affair, much of that really doesn't benefit us, right? And, that, and that's a good scenario if it don't benefit us. Good meaning in comparison to a lot of what's online. Because a lot of what's online hurts us. You follow what I'm saying? So if you compare that, to, it hurts you to something that really don't hurt you. It don't help you, but it don't hurt you. Then that's a lot better than that which hurts you. There's so much online that actually hurts you, that incurs sin for you, and so on and so forth. Ma'am? But yet, but yet, we spend a lot of time looking at screens in this situation. Whereas if a person took, for example, yani one of the books of Adhkar that is based upon the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, authentic, and he looked at that for the same amount of time he looked at his screen, what's going to benefit him? He gonna, it's all benefit. All benefit. Remembering Allah, learning Adhkar, so on and so forth, is all benefit. Naam. So this is just a reminder for myself and for everyone to let us utilize our time and get back to those things that are really important, inshallah ta'ala, and those things that really benefit us. And let us encourage our children and families with the likes of this because we want them to benefit as well. Naam. Naam.